Today's scripture will be Matthew chapter 27, verses 51 to 52, to 53. Then behold, the view of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were slit, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his res- resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When Jesus died on the cross, several miracles happened. And another time we talk about the curtain of the temple was uh, divided by a special God's intervention. And today we'll talk about another miracle that happened during that time. And I invite you to open your scripture in Matthew chapter 27. And we read from verse 51 through 53. Matthew 27, 51 through 53. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to bottom. And the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Matthew is the only writer that describes this event. All the other evangelists present the sacrifice of Jesus, him being on the cross, people saying or doing things against him, but only Matthew is the one that recur- reports this great event, great miracle. I know in the scripture there are others who were resurrected in the Old Testament, and even Jesus himself resurrected several people. And you remember the story. But when he was on the cross, the Bible says it, it, a quake happened, an earthquake happened, the rocks were split. The graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and they came out exactly when Jesus was resurrected. That was a miracle. Atheists, they laugh when they read this verse, and they said, Titus, who else wrote or reported about this event? Nobody else. Neither Luke, John, Mark, they that was an interesting event. Everyone was supposed to talk about it. None others outside the religious or the Christianity circle mentioned anything about this. How can you believe this, rep- this re- record that is in the scripture just here? Friends, I don't have much to say, except I can tell them, because they said just Matthew uh, recorded in his scripture and none, not the other ones. And I said, what about the resurrection of Jesus? All four of them mentioned the same thing. Do you believe just because four mentioned? Do you believe? No, we don't believe. Then that means it doesn't matter for you that much. And also, as a Christian today, I don't have a lot of proofs. I cannot tell you exactly how it happened or what happened. But if I am a Christian, I believe God created this world and created myself from nothing. He created Adam and Eve from nothing. That was the, the primarily miracle God performed. Then if I accept that, if I am in a relationship with God, I accept this uh, record from Matthew 27 verse uh, 51 to 53. For me, it's not that important to have the proofs as long as the Bible tells me the same way the Bible tells me that I was created by nothing, from nothing at the beginning. And uh, I can have a good life today, and if Jesus comes soon during my lifetime, I will ask him what happened. If not, I will ask him when I meet him for, uh, for the first time. But now this is a miracle. Many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And they coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Who are the saints that were raised from the dead at Christ's death or resurrection? Second question, what was the reason for this special resurrection? And third, why this event is significant to our communion service today? Okay? I can tell you the truth, 
I wish I know the answers of all these questions. But I will disappoint you. I don't, I don't know that much. But I know something. This event happened exactly when the first fruit ceremony happened during that time. Remember, it, this is a correlation or a fulfillment of a prophecy that was in the Old Testament through the, through the symbols of the sanctuary. Fulfillment of the Feast of the First Fruit of Harvest mentioned in Leviticus chapter 23, 10 through 11, that says, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give to you and reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of the harvest to the priest. He shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted in your behalf. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Friends, Jesus himself didn't choose the final events in his life. He didn't say, today I will be persecuted. Today I'll be crucified. Today I'll tell people, this is the day. You cannot miss this day. Tomorrow will be late. I know he told Judah, what do you want to do? Do it quickly. Because he had in mind a timetable that fits very well with the prophecies from the Old Testament. But he wasn't in charge with what others will do to him. That means uh, the high priest, all the priests, persecutors of Jesus Christ, fulfilled the prophecies of the Old Testament exactly according to God's plan. They, did it, they wanted to do uh, uh, harm against Jesus, but they didn't know they will fulfill exactly the timetable of the events from the Old Testament. And this resurrection, actually his own resurrection, it happened exactly on the day when they were supposed to take the first fruit to go to the temple and to present them as a, as a uh, gratitude offering to the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20 through 23 says, But in fact Christ have been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. See, the first fruit is Jesus Christ. And he was resurrected exactly when Hebrew people, Jewish people, celebrated their ceremony, their special holiday. And the Bible says Jesus is the first fruit. Also in the same time, miraculously, other saints from the Old Testament resurrected with him. Wow, you cannot stop God's intervention in your life. You know, you may be afraid some, some of some events where you may worry about others. You may anticipate some, but God is in charge. To, uh, uh, in, he's in, in the business of fulfilling his prophecy on the right time. No matter what people say, no matter what people do, God is in charge with the events of the history. Now, before we go, what happened to the resurrected saints, I can ask myself, who are they? I don't know. We have some common theories that say they were saints from the Old Testament. Some say they were people who recently died. And when the priest went outside the city to bring the harvest, the first fruit, into the temple, they found a multitude of people coming from the cemetery. You know, and they asked them, who are you? Who are, you know, you died 10 years ago. You died 20 years ago. And, you know, grandma, grandpa, whoever it was. And uh, other commentaries say, no, there were saints from the Old Testament. And the Greek Orthodox Church has an interesting idea. And Jim Miller told me today before my sermon, and I thank him for this. Uh, they said, Adam himself and Abraham and other saints from the Old Testament was resurrected on that day as a first fruit for the Lord. And uh, the Bible doesn't say that much, except they were saints. This is for sure. They were saints who died before and they were resurrected. 
What happened to the resurrected saints? There are three options. They are still alive today because if God resurrected them on that day, you cannot kill them back. You know, even Lazarus died back. He had another funeral service. The, his family had to pay double for him. But anyway, they are still live today. Nobody saw them. Some of you visit Israel. You couldn't find them anyway. They died after a while waiting for the permanent resurrection. This is another option. The third option, they were taken to heaven. Shall we vote today to see? <laughs> uh, let's see what Ellen White says. A commentary uh, will, you'll find it in, in the Bible commentaries, volume 5. The captives brought up from the graves at the time of the resurrection of Jesus were his trophies as a conquering prince. Thus he attested his victory over death and the grave. Thus he gave a pledge in an earnest of the resurrection of all the righteous dead. Those who were called from their graves went to the city and appeared unto many in their resurrection formed and testified that Jesus had indeed risen from the dead and that they had risen with him. And second par passage I have from the Desire of Ages but those who came forth from the grave of the Christ's resurrection were raised to everlasting life. They ascended with him as trophies of his victory over death and the grave. These, said Christ, are no longer the captives of Satan. I have redeemed them. I have brought them from the grave as the first fruits of my power to be with me where I am, never more to see death or experience sorrow. Friends, I love this because it makes sense. In Ellen White, through inspiration, went on that passage, and she provided this information for us. And um, I see right now the reason or the significance of the raised saints were, uh, then and, and, uh, and now. Why were they resurrected? Why a special resurrection during that time? First idea, it was a powerful testimony in favor of Jesus. What does it mean? Remember when Jesus was on the cross? Almost nobody believed in him being the Messiah, being the Son of God, coming to our world to die for us. His disciples were disappointed. We thought, we expected, but this didn't happen. His enemies said we cannot wait to get rid of him. A few more hours and he will not speak anymore. And almost nobody believed he was the Messiah, the Son of God. And guess what? Even when he was resurrected, people started doubting. doubting. Uh, Mary, he, he was the gardener. Disciples, when they heard the news, uh, these are fables said by some women. But the fact that these saints of the Old Testament were resurrected that day was a great evidence in favor of Jesus, in favor of his uh, plan to save people, to save, to save us. And you cannot stop those. I don't know. I try to imagine myself, let's say Abraham or other saints from the Old Testament coming to Jerusalem and looking around. It's like going, um, I don't know where, to NASA to look on their equipment. It's interesting, but you don't know what's going on. We're, we're going to a Japan and using a toilet there. You don't know how they use it. It's very complicated, you know. I don't know the, their reaction, the way, they, the way they saw the society during that time. But that's not the most important thing. They were there to testify. Jesus resurrected. And second, they were there to testify there is an assurance for resurrection. And the Bible says, I am the first fruit, Jesus said. I am the first fruit. With me, I can demonstrate others who were resurrected. Okay? And this is a proof, this is a evidence that when it will be your turn, you'll be resurrected too. That means have faith in me, follow me, no matter what people say about you, or no matter their attitude against you or against God. Sometimes, friends, when I read the news, I said, is America doomed? Is America that far away from God? Don't worry much about that. Be more preoccupied with what happens between you and God in relationship with Him because He will take care of the rest. 
in the Bible says there will be a resurrection. And again, that verse says, when Jesus comes, not right now, we don't go to heaven right away. We don't go to Abraham's bosom when we die. This is a, a pop, pop, popular message, but it's not true. Jesus is the firstborn or the first fruit, not because he's the first one that ever been resurrected, but because he's the real resurrected one uh, that through him all the others were resurrected and they will have the chance to have the eternal life. He's the first fruit in terms of the quality, not in terms of the time timetable. And the third one that is connected to us today, the significance of the race saints then and now. This event that I found in the book of, that, uh, of Matthew presents the symbol of the new spiritual life in Jesus. Okay? That means all of us are dead in, in, uh, in our sins. And I don't use a lot of Bible verses to demonstrate this. We are born in sins, and through our choice, we are dead in sins. And when Jesus resurrected, when Jesus uh, completed God's plan for salvation of this world, others, saints, the Bible says they were saints, they were resurrected. They came back to life and they showed themselves to people in the city. Friends, the good news today is God has the same plan and this is the right day, this is the right day of the first fruit day. That means he wants to see saints that are resurrected and that go into the city to show themselves to others. Are you willing to put your name on the list? Are you willing to be that saint today that is resurrected from our spiritual condition? And when, when, when we celebrate Jesus' resurrection, by God's grace to say, I'm resurrected too. And I'm a proof for others that God can resurrect all of us. First, from our spiritual condition, and second, to translate us in a new condition when he comes. This is the, the connection between this passage in the communion service today. But sometimes, friends, it happens that we have just the wish, just the thought, just the desire. I want to be better. I want to, let's say, to come to church on a regular basis. I want to be part of that. I want to do that. But just the thought, just the wish, wishful thought. The Bible says, Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from, the, from top to bottom, and the earth quaked where it was an earthquake, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened. That means those saints from the Old Testament, they didn't say, no, this is the time for us to wake up. This is the time to resurrect because it's the first fruit dates of the, you know, their holiday. Now, first, an earthquake happened and they were raised to death against their will. Friends, I am afraid to ask in my prayers, this question or this prayer or this request to God, Lord, resurrect me against my will. Send an earthquake, send an earthquake in my life that makes me turn the directions of my life. I am afraid. But friends, sometimes it happens this way. Because when everything is good in our life, we don't care. We are complacent. We are spiritually lazy. We say, I have time in the future to make this commitment, to make this change, and so on. But when an earthquake comes, when a health issue, a relational issue, a profession, job-related issue, people come to God, and they are resurrected, they are on fire. I don't know. I don't know. But see the, uh, the scripture here, an earthquake happened, the rocks were split, and the graves were opened. The Bible says in Colossians 3, 1 through 2, Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. I love this verse because concludes my presentation today. 
if you are raised up with Christ. As those saints were raised up with Christ, they were happy, they were given the eternal life, they joined Jesus in heaven. There are commentaries, they say those 24 elders around the throne of God are made by this number of saints from the Old Testament, plus Moses and Elijah and Enoch. They were there, people that we know about. And they are there with Jesus at this point. But now it's our turn. And the Bible says, if you are, have been raised up with Christ by seeking the things above, where Christ is, let's set up minds on things above. The Bible was very smart, or this Bible verse, it was very smart presented because we live in a computer time today and we set up things when we have a smartphone. We have a smartphone. And first time when I, when I buy a smartphone, I, I work on some settings here. I don't want people to bother me with something. I don't want to go there. I, don't. I put the settings there from the beginning. I don't go every time on those settings. From time to time. But at the beginning when I buy a smartphone, I want to be sure the settings are the way I want it. This smart Bible verse says, Set up, set your minds on things above. Friends, communion service today is the perfect opportunity for us to set the minds on the things above. Some of us we may forgot. Some of us we may neglect it. But today we have the opportunity to do it. Because this way we demonstrate we are resurrected with Christ. And uh, as the children's story presented today, as we behave normally in our community, people will say, oh, a Christian, oh, I want to be a Christian. Well, congratulations, you are a Christian. Why? Because the words I speak, they are from above. My behavior is from above. My attitude in traffic, wherever I go, it's from above. And I may, I may make mistakes. I may commit a sin by not paying attention, but that's not me. This is not part of my new nature. And I solve that with, between me and Christ. In, I, move, uh, I move on. Friends, communion service today is a special moment when all of us are invited to be part of the, of the holy table. And in our Madisonist church, if you are committed in your relationship with Christ, if you are dedicated, you are invited to be part of the service today. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for our Savior, Jesus Christ, who came into our world who died, who sacrificed his life, but in the same time, who was resurrected, who came back to life, and also who brought others to life too. Those are a symbol. Those are a trophy for his achievements. But in the same time, Lord, those saints from the Old Testament are great models for us. If you resurrected them, you can resurrect us too. First, Lord, you know our spiritual condition. You know what happens in our lives right now. Please provide a spiritual revival in our personal lives, in our families, in our church, in our environment. And help us, Lord, not just to go around and show ourselves to others to demonstrate we are better than them, but help us to have Jesus' behavior, Jesus' attitude for people to celebrate you and to be grateful to you. And Lord, we want a special revival in our church today. We want that resurrection of our spirits, of our minds. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.